Oh hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster and I am excited as hell today because we get to start up on a series that I have been wanting to start basically since I began this channel. We are doing an in-depth runway show analysis. Who better to start this series off with than Raph Simmons, my dad, your dad, all of our dad. He's fashion dad, Raph. All right, so here's how this is gonna work. Most reviews of runway shows are based off of the show notes and from actually like being there. I have the benefit of hindsight since this show was well over a year ago and I've been obsessed with it. Dad is pretty open about what he's trying to reference and what his goals are with the clothes. So, oh, we gotta do the theme song first, hang on. <laughs> Okay, wait, stop. If you have not watched the video for this runway collection, I'm linking it in the description. Go watch that first and then come back to here because I'm not gonna try to like tell you poetically like what the show was. Before we get into the show notes, let's quickly establish the who, what, when, where of the show itself. The Autumn Winter 18 runway show went down in a warehouse space in Manhattan. It was part of New York Fashion Week, of course, because at the time, Raph lived in New York for the first time in his life because he works for Calvin Klein. The show features a song called Radio by the uh, acid techno DJ Emmanuel Top, who got really big in France in the 90s. That's a pretty easy nod to Raph's history. He was rave kid in Europe at that time. And this show comes as a big departure from the shows that Raph had done up to this point in New York. Because he started working at Calvin Klein, his time was split between his own brand and the responsibilities at his bigger job. Like most designers in that position, his namesake brand suffers a little bit. And it's not to say that the three shows before this one weren't good or they weren't interesting or that we didn't enjoy them. It just wasn't the kind of work that we're used to Raph Simmons putting out. If it helps to contextualize it at all, like I said, Raph keeps all of his show notes on his website. They're readily available. But for the three runway shows before Autumn Winter 18, there's no runway notes. <laughs> And it's easy to see why. The Robert Maplethorpe collection, the Spring Summer 2017 by Raph, it was boring. These clothes are somewhat cool in the larger context of Raph's entire catalog, but when I got home that day to like frantically look up the Raph Simmons show that had happened, I was pretty disappointed. And the Blade Runner runway shows seem to basically just sort of be like a vibey stand-in for what would ultimately be Raph re-releasing Greatest Hits clothes. It's cool. He's built up a lot of capital and a lot of trust with us, his audience. And so we stood by and we watched his work at Calvin Klein and we were totally patient about it. And then Dad delivered. He brought it home with Autumn Winter 18 because this shit is incredible. Back in true form, this collection does what Raph does best. It facilitates a conversation about youth culture from the perspective of adulthood. Let's get cracking on those show notes. Autumn Winter 2018, entitled Youth in Motion. Christiane F., Uli Idel's visceral 1981 film based on Christiane Felscherenau, Kai Herrmann, and Horst Reich's book, Christian F. Der Kinder vom Bahnhof Zoo, which is German for the children of the Bahnhof Zoo, has long occupied a pivotal place in Raph Simmons' imagination. Simmons, like many Europeans of his generation, was exposed to the harrowing world of Christian F. in high school, where the film and the book were discussed as part of the curriculum. Set in late 1970s Cold War era Berlin, the Berlin of David Bowie's Low, Heroes, and Lodger, Christian F. ultimately remains a cautionary tale, one that unashamedly and unapologetically depicts the realities of drug use and addiction. Images of Detlev and Christian F., the film's anti-heroes, as played by first-time actors Thomas Halstein and Natya Bruckenhorst, populate youth in motion as emotional markers for the persistent relevance, socially and psychologically, of Christian F.'s story and Edel's film. Raph Simmons is a designer that relies heavily on referencing other pieces of art within his own artwork. So we have to ask ourselves the question, how is dad making meaning with those references? The most direct reference that he's making to the movie are the 
huge graphic t-shirts and graphic prints on the pants. Without getting too deep into it, the girl is Christiane and the boy is her romantic interest, Detlev. The movie opens with a monologue of Christiane talking about how much she hates normal living. So she goes to a nightclub called Sound and meets all these guys who are heroin addicts but very charming and attractive. And the one who doesn't seem like just a total dick is this kid named Detlev. Once Christiane starts using heroin herself, she ends up visiting the boys at their day job, which is hanging out at this train station near the zoo and selling their bodies to adult dudes. But even this, Christiane is able to sort of write off as not that big of a deal. She gets kicked out of her house. She is very, very addicted, much more so than she thought she was. She becomes a prostitute herself, she almost dies, and the film ends with her going to rehab and things looking a little bit brighter, but it's still this like very harrowing tale. So more than just being a cautionary tale about drug use, this movie seemed to be starting this conversation about how inevitable it is that drugs are involved in counterculture movements. Christiane F. and Raph Simmons' work seem to overlap in one major way. And that's that they're talking about the moment in a teenager's life when they say, I'm sick of this shit, I gotta get out of here. Then both Raph Simmons and Christiane F. go to the next step, which is countercultural lifestyle stuff of like music and art and creativity and new friend groups and cute boys. And that tends to be where Raph stays and Christian F goes to what for many people is the unfortunate next step, which is that the friends and the music and the art are no longer a part of it. It's now only become about self-destructive behavior. By acknowledging this film, I think Raph is trying to kind of acknowledge that there is that next step for many people and that for all the youth culture that he has referenced in all of his collections over the years, drugs just seem to always be a part of those scenes. Raf does specify in the show notes, and I'm specifying here, that they're not making a value assessment about that at all. I think Raf is trying to just bring up that it is a little weird that narcotics seem to just always be a part of music. Why? As far as direct visual references are concerned, this show has a lot of them. Not surprising because it sounds like Raph saw this when he was way too young and might have some of this uh, seared into his brain. For a bunch of kids to have seen Christian F, especially at school, like as part of the curriculum, uh, kind of like showing fourth graders Requiem for a Dream or Train Spotting. If I was a little kid and saw that scene where the baby is like crawling on the ceiling, I would have just shit myself and died. That would have just been, that'd have been it. No more bliss. That was terrifying. In Look 31, the model's hair resembles that of Christian F from the movie. Early on when she first starts going to nightclubs, she starts dyeing her hair red and it's this cute, sexy thing at first. And then when she gets really deep into her addiction, it grows out a bunch and it looks all mangled and her roots are really long. And for the viewer, that's our biggest hallmark of the toll that the drugs are taking on her. In look four, we see the jacket that Christiane F. wears to sound the first night that she goes with her friend from school. The cut is different, but the color and the material are identical. There's a few looks where these numbers are visible on the futuristic gloves that they're wearing. That's supposed to resemble Christiane's number that was stamped onto her hand when she entered into club sound for the first time. Christiane's mom's boyfriend's name is Rolf. Rolf is always seen wearing this very stodgy gray blazer. It's hard to not see that as inspiration for some of the outerwear in the show. I also saw a bit of a comparison between the crimson washcloth that Christiane uses just after she starts using. Looks an awful lot like one of the drugs dickies. I'm also tempted to say that the knot on the black backpacks looks an awful lot like the ascots that Christiane and Detlev wear near the end of the movie when they're reaching the pit of their addiction. And additionally, the boxy shape that's put on the back of some of the outerwear resembles the jacket that Detlev is wearing when Christiane first meets him at the club. You might recognize some of the Christiana F 
imagery from the 2001 Riot 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 show that basically established Raph as a staple of menswear. The fact that this story is also referenced in the 2001 show that really launched him on the path that he's still continuing on today, that to me very much says that this collection here, Fall Winter 2018, is Dad talking about all of his work. Just bringing up the elephant in the room of drugs and the inevitable tie-in with subculture. All right, let's keep it moving. Second section of the show notes. Do you see how much tea you make me drink? Elsewhere, Simmons counters the often brutal nature of Christiane F's adolescence with the sardonic texts drawn from Cookie Mueller and Glenn O'Brien's lost mid-1980s tragic comic play, Drugs. Another kind of cautionary tale that chronicles the chemical entanglements of its straight-out-of-central casting protagonists. The utilitarian design of the 2016 edition of Drugs, the Kingsborough Press and For the Common Good, published with yellow and orange covers, is a recurring visual motif throughout Youth in Motion, as are Simmons's subsequent adaptations of its basic design to create a series of applied, color-coded patches that index in a deadpan manner akin to the periodic table, the abbreviated names of narcotic substances, LSD, XTC, GHB, and 2CB, each with their own specific generation and subcultural associations. The pieces that reference this play are uh, probably the most memorable pieces from the entire show. At first, I thought that you couldn't get any more blatant with your reference than the photographs from the film being put onto t-shirts. But then I realized that models walking down the runway wearing a hoodie that literally was the play itself. <laughs> Dad is on a whole nother level with these one-to-one -one references. This play was never really put on the stage after it was written in the 80s, and it never really got any kind of publishing until just recently when these two independent publishers teamed up to design a cover and publish 500 copies. Unfortunately, all 500 copies got snatched up. I was really hoping to bring some kind of further analysis to this thing after reading the text itself, but when the text is not attainable, that's a little tough to do. But either way, this play seems to further underscore this current of what Simmons is already talking about, where drugs seem to be this defining element of these different generational periods in these people's lives. But I do want to dial in a little bit and focus on the graphic design element of this piece and its use in the show. The play was released in two different colorways, and just from a graphic design aesthetics perspective, those are gorgeously designed covers. Those colors are beautiful, that font is great. Uh, the, the whole thing is very striking, and the fact that it's just called drugs is very commanding of one's attention. And I think that's partly why Raph included it in the show. Later on in the show notes a little bit, he talks about how addiction and drugs in general are just taboo topics. A lot of times with art, it's helpful to pay attention to what emotions we're feeling when we see something and ask ourselves why those emotions are there and wonder if that emotion was a planned part of the artist's creation. When I watched the video for this show for the first time and that model turned the corner and I could see that the hoodie just said, DRUGS! I think I even said out loud, alone in my apartment, come on, man. Like it seems so ham-fisted and obvious that it just seemed like kind of corny and kind of cringy. And I think that that's because the topic of drugs, whether you're loudly condoning it or you're loudly condemning it, it's a topic that just makes people uncomfortable. So here I think Raph is, is borrowing this brilliant bit of graphic design to illustrate that this feeling that you feel when you see this, pay attention to what that feeling is. If someone or something, especially a piece of art, is trying to discuss this subject, why are you so closed off to that? See, that was me asking myself that question with the power of hindsight. On with the show notes. Youth in motion implies movement across space and time and between inner and external realities and draws freely from the lexicons of art, cinema, literature, music, 
the counterculture, and the attitude of couture. Youth in Motion is presented in a mise-en-scene that echoes the salons of mid-century couture houses, the discrete number of models employed, the numbering system that identified specific looks, the opulent tableau, food, drink, and flowers itself reminiscent of a Flemish still life. Youth in Motion contrasts the volume and extravagant materiality of couture, evident in Dad's use of satin de chess, with the more utilitarian manners of pocketed space pants and hooded tabards with their indexical narcotic references. The one thing that stands out to me the most in this paragraph is where he points out that the mise-en-scene, the, the setting of the stage, looks like a Flemish still life. So what I'm about to read is not actually in the show notes themselves, but I think it does a good job of summarizing what these paintings were and what they symbolized. Quote, Especially popular in this period were vanitas paintings in which sumptuous arrangements of fruits and flowers, books, statuettes, vases, were accompanied by symbolic reminders of life's impermanence. Additionally, a skull, an hourglass or pocket watch, a candle burning down, or a book with pages turning, would serve as a moralizing message on the ephemerality of sensory pleasures. Often, some of the fruits and flowers themselves would be shown starting to spoil or fade to emphasize the same point. So in the same way that he contrasts the narrative of Christian F. by showing Detlev when she first meets him, and then in the same garments showing Christian F. at her absolute worst, the very setting of the stage is reminiscent of these paintings from Raff's part of the world, from Raff's country, that have this message of all of these sumptuous things that life has to offer you are temporary, and behind them is death. Finally, let's spend a little bit of time just talking about the clothes themselves and whether or not they are good. The results are in, those clothes are awesome. Dad Simmons is one of the OGs of the streetwear obsessed hype beast climate that we find ourselves here in. And with this collection, he shows that he is still a master of creating that stuff. The pants with the patches on them, the half hoodie drug things, and especially reinventing something as weird as the dicky. We saw some really big innovation in this show. This half sweater knitwear thing seems like such a raff idea. It's kind of shocking that this hasn't been done every show prior to it. And also the way that the jackets button together, where instead of it being like laid one over the other, the jackets are coming together and buttoning like that. Pretty cool detail, pretty cool detail. With the heavy influence of Christian F, I really wish that Raph had included some of the other actual clothes from the movie in this collection. It does seem like there was an awful lot of stuff in there that was just sort of waiting to get used in a Raph collection. Okay, actual trigger warning here. We're about to see still images that include a picture of a dead body and someone shooting heroin into their neck. Here we go. This outfit is incredibly Raph. Kind of hard to see here, but the spike motif on this knitwear is just the best. This tie-dye is quite nice. This seems like a graphic design direction that Raph could do a ton with. This is completely awesome. And if that coat was like four sizes bigger, I would assume that the kid was just wearing a Raph coat. This guy looks pretty cool. All right, to review, we use the show notes to kind of guide us through an interpretation for the Fall Winter 2018 Raph Simmons show. We started with the movie Christiana F. We then moved on to the play Drugs and the use of its graphic design in the show. We then moved on to Flemish still life paintings. Bam! Analysis complete. I loved making this video. Thank you so much for watching. I would really love to hear from you guys what you want to hear me analyze next as far as runway shows are concerned. I'm basically open to anything as long as it's got a lot of good stuff inside of it. I am down to make a video about it. So let's hear some comments. Let's hear some replies. Tweet at me. I don't know if you have my number. You can text me. Love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you next week. Goodbye.